Hey everyone, Cash here bringing you another video from Madden 25. Today we are continuing where we left off in the last video. We're in the preseason, we'll be simming through each week, not going to play any of the games, but I'm going to be showing you the steps that come up in the relocation process. Those are going to start in week three, and I'm also going to show you all of the signed, released, traded players, and we'll see if there's any good enough that we can pick up to improve a couple more positions on our team before we head to the regular season. So first up, week two, you see Chiefs pick up a couple wide receivers, Braylon Edwards. Just gonna scroll here through here, Aaron Curry to the Eagles, Michael Robinson to the Cowboys. Nothing too crazy. Um there is a bit of a problem in all the tests that I did of and I mentioned a little bit in the first video, the Q the CPU goes a little bit crazy with the ad drops. I did have a problem, or there is a problem, with uh, some pretty decent players getting released. And I tried to go through a lot of different ways of fixing that. I was able to fix it for, for some players where if, before you started, if you release them and then sign them back, it would keep that team from releasing them every time. So you can see the trades here. These seem to be scripted. Every test, I, test franchise I did, these same trades were made. Uh, biggest one is Jack Quiz Rogers getting traded to the Chiefs for Allen Bailey. Actually, just for Allen Bailey. It was a 6th and 7th that went to the Chiefs as well. In the released, I don't think there's not going to be too many in here. The biggest one, I think it's going to be Jeff Demps by the Buccaneers. So, alright, we're going to advance to the next week, week 3. First thing up is cut day. We're at 63. we got to get down to 59. We're going to cut Ricky Stanzi. we got Tebow now. We don't need four QB or five QBs and then we're gonna release Stephen Burton one of the wide receivers and then the last one or no we got two more Tinker worst tight end we're gonna get rid of him and then RB Jones the worst D tackle the rookie out of Alabama we're gonna get rid of him as well next up first step in the relocation process we gotta pick our city as I did give you just an example there on that front one but there's, I don't remember how many, there's quite a different, quite a few different cities you can pick from. As I mentioned in the first video, I, I like to keep it as realistic as possible. One of the problems with this year's is you can't change your team's division, so it's not really realistic to put the Jaguars in a city out west. And then I also looked up to see which cities are most likely to get a uh, move team, expansion team in real life. And so I ended up Pairing it down to four cities. There's London, Toronto, which would most likely probably be the Bills moving there, but Toronto, San Antonio, who hosted the Saints after Hurricane Katrina, and then Chicago, which is right there. Sneaky team that could possibly get a second NFL team in their city. Um, after thinking about it and trying to decide which would be the best, most exciting, um, I really came down to London and Chicago. Uh, Toronto, it's more likely that the Bills would probably move there, so didn't want to go there. And then San Antonio, I looked at the, I did a test one with them and looked at like, the jerseys and stuff, and they were just honestly ugly. And that's the problem with a lot of these cities. A lot of the, the team names and the logos and the jerseys are just not good. They could have did a better job of designing those if they weren't going to give us the ability to do it ourselves they had to make them nice and a lot of them are just not good but in the end i decided to go with london it just seemed like the best fit they have a really high fan interest the city offers the most money out of any of them for a new stadium and we don't have a lot of cash so we want to try and get as as much as we can we want to have a, a city that's going to be interested so that just seemed like the right one to go with so after that we're gonna have a media question about moving All right, so because it's good business, and we'll now head to a much bigger football market, which is important for the health of the franchise. All right, second one, at the end of the day, it was hard to get free agents to come here. We'll have a new stadium in a new city, so it becomes easier to sell. I don't know if that's the best choice. Third one, I get that many of our fans are upset, but long-term moves allows us to bring us a new generation of fans. I don't know if that's the best one either. I think we're going to go with the first one here, and that's going to give us plus two per win in the new city and minus five loss for ticket prices that's going to be a 
a bad one this season. Here we go, week three, the signings. Michael Jenkins to the Lions. Raiders signed Cluey. Got some kicker punters, fullbacks, nothing really sp that special. Yeah, that's going to be it for the signings, trades. There are a couple trades. There's those two guys that were on the trading block. Terrence Cody, it's a pretty big trade to the 49ers. Ravens and Niners like to trade with each other. Then week three, the releases. So this is a bigger release week, but so far nothing that really stands out. Giants gets released. I'm not seeing Andre Ellington by the cards. It's still not that big release. The big ones will be coming next week. And the rosters have to get down to 53. George Selvey released by the Cowboys. But next week when they have to get down to the 53 man roster, that's when you're going to see some of the bigger names get released. Week 3, they still have the chance to release some not great players. Dane Sanzenbacher. And I'll expand a little more when we get to next week on the issue with the CPU releasing really good players. It turns out it's it's a problem with the cap space and there's just certain players that I don't know if it has to do with their overall, but just their cap hit number just doesn't work. So the CPU just feels the need to release them. Like the one which I was able to fix was BJ Raji. At the end of the preseason, every time the Packers would release BJ Raji, which he's most likely not going to get released in real life. So I was able to release him before this started and re-sign him and then they stopped releasing him because his cap number was a little bit lower sucks you have to do that but allows me to avoid doing the 32 team control which is what i don't want to do so here we go i think we're going to advance here to week four so last week of the preseason we got another cut day we got to cut six more guys to get down to the 53 some of the harder decisions have to start being made although for here we can get rid of Matt Scott, take it down to three QBs, get rid of another tight end. Only need to carry three tight ends. We're gonna get rid of a couple corners here, just the bottom guys that just aren't good enough. So that's four of them. Then we're gonna release strong safety. And then we're gonna release that other middle linebacker. Greg Jones played played pretty good preseason. I like him. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep him, make him the backup middle linebacker. Next step in the relocation process, we're going to choose a name. There is an issue, just for any of you that want to do this on your own, if you move a team and keep your team name, there is a problem with when you go and play your games, your end zone is going to be what that team's Super Bowl end zone would be. So it keeps the name. So like if you move the Rams to LA, it's going to have St. Louis Rams in the end zone. So that kind of sucks. But here we go, here's our team option, Bulldogs. I don't think that looks anything like a Bulldog. There's a 30% fan interest on that one. Embodying the British spirit in Winston Churchill. Don't really like that one. The next one is going to be the Black Knights. This one has a 50% fan interest, so high fan interest. Pretty cool logo, I think. Famous historical literature character. And then the last one is the Monarchs. That's 20% fan interest, that's funny. It says the second highest votes, but the Bulldog got 30%, so they got a bit of a typo there. But for this, I really like the Black Knights one. It also has the highest fan interest, so that's the one that we're going to go with. We're going to be known as the London Black Knights. I think that's pretty cool. One of the better combinations of any of the cities. Some of them have some... Some of the cities had some really weird names. Uh, but here we go. Week 4, the Cardinals signed Brandon Merriweather. I think I might have missed that one when we were going through the releases. There's no trades in week four, and then here we go, week four releases. This is where you're gonna see, and there's one of the ones that I could not get the Broncos to not release Robert Ayers. Even after the season starts, of I tried adding, becoming the Broncos and re-signing him, but the very next week they would just release him again. So nothing I can do there. Robert Ayers is just not gonna be a Bronco in this franchise. But as we go through, I don't think I've seen any other big names yet. Ronnie Brown released by the Chargers. Frank Samba released by the Chiefs. 
Chiefs release Hussein Abdullah. He's a pretty good guy. I know we could use some free safety help. Might have to go and sign him. Ooh, and the Chiefs release Dexter, Dexter McCluster. So after they trade for Jacquez Rodgers, maybe they don't feel the need to carry Dexter McCluster anymore. That's a pretty big release. Let's see what else we got. The Colts, who the Colts release? Don't be that good. Levon, Brazil. Cowboys release Philip Tanner. Brian Cook. Not too many big names on here. There's going to be one more of the big ones that I could not manage to keep. He was released Trent Robinson. That I could not manage to keep the CPU from doing. And you will see that coming up here in a little bit. Fortnite released Parrish Cox. Marlon Moore. Giants released Brandon Jacobs. This is the week two roster, so Brandon Jacobs was already on the Giants, but they released some. They also released Mike Patterson and Sean Rogers and Will Hill. Some pretty good guys. Bengals released on Terrio McCaleb. Lions, get rid of nobody important. Pack, not really anybody important. The Patriots, and here is this other one. Rob Ninkovich, that was the other guy. The Patriots, which... In a lot of what I was trying to do to fix that, they have a really high cap number in no matter what I did. Same thing as with the Broncos. They just would release him every time. If I become the Patriots and release and re-sign him the very next week, they release him. So I managed to get it down to just those two guys. There was a few more that would do it, but I managed to fix every other one except for those two. So then I can deal with, as we get through here, almost to the bottom, Steelers release Isaac Redman. Nothing else really too big. I don't think. I don't remember. Bears release their punter in Harvey Unga. And yeah, that's it for the releases. So I went through my team after to see what I could improve. And going through here, I realized I still had two fullbacks. So I'm going to go ahead and release one of those. And that means we can sign one player at least. And I'm going to look to see if there's... Any other ones I mentioned, Hussein Abdullah, the free safety. So I could sign him and release my current backup free safety. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I came in here, checked out who was available, seeing who might fit with my scheme. But in the end, Hussein Abdullah seemed like a good guy to get. Solid backup free safety to carry. So I'm going to sign him. And then after looking through my roster, I realized I needed another backup lineman. So I went in here. Looking for a left guard. Not too many good ones to pick from, so I decided to just go with Casey Stutter, the guy there on the top, which actually might compete for a starting job because I think he actually has the same rating as my current starting left guard. So I'm going to sign those two guys, and that's the team that I'm going to carry through into week one. We'll see, and then I'm going to go in here and release Josh Evans. Don't need him for free safety anymore. But we'll see. I think there's even some signing and releases in week one, so might be able to pick another guy up there and then here we go you see preseason is we're in week three we are two and one at this point and i'm going to show you the stats here because once i advance you're not going to be able to see the preseason stats tebow didn't do anything too good for set seven yards of carry that's pretty good jeremy ebert eight for 140 nothing really special stands out in anything here just the preseason games and then the last thing i'm going to show you is the finances the ticket prices so you can just see what's in here I just try to adjust the prices as it shows the value there, the decent value, the good value. Then we got the merchandise, got jerseys, t-shirts, hats. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here. So it's a pretty, pretty deep mode, which just adds a little bit to it, keeps it fun and exciting. As up here, we got apparel, jerseys, memorabilia. This jersey has specific jerseys, which was interesting. I checked after the week after I signed Tebow, and he had the highest jersey sales on my team, beating out Maurice Jones Drew. So you'd think that probably worked the same way in real life, but Jaguars just don't want them. But that's going to bring us to the end of this video. We're at the end of the preseason. Up next is week one. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. I would really appreciate it. And subscribe to see any future videos that I make. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.